Everybody is saying that buying a home is the craziest thing you can do. The common misconception, the magic number is you need 20% down to purchase a home. Why they don't move forward with the process because they're getting the wrong information when they start thinking they need 20% down and closing costs that a home ownership is just not even attainable. Welcome. I am so excited to be here today and so excited for our guests. Uh, you're going to want to watch this video if you are a home buyer, because right now everybody is saying that buying a home is the craziest thing you can do. Lizzie and I are going to unpack three crucial items that you're going to want to know if you are a home buyer in this market. I'm Gordon Hegman, Arizona One Real Estate, a local real estate agent here in Arizona. And I have Lizzie Hofer with Cross Country Mortgage. This woman is absolutely phenomenal. And the reason why I am bringing Lizzie to you today, I want to bring home buyers, home sellers, the top minds in real estate. So when you are making your real estate decisions, you have access to all the best information. Um, obviously, if you're new to the channel, welcome back. Uh, if you love these videos or getting a lot of uh, phenomenal information, please feel to like, subscribe, and share. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the little bell. So every time we post one of these uh, videos, you get the first alert. I have Lizzie Hofer with us. Let me introduce Lizzie. She is voted the number one loan officer in the nation, number one female loan officer, numerous times by the Scotsman Guide, also the number one uh, Hispanic a uh, mortgage loan originator is voted by the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Not only is she a leader and one of the best mortgage lenders in the space, she also gives back to her community as well, which is really important. Uh, she created the White Envelope Project, which actually is a homeless awareness program that gives those in need in the community some help. She also volunteers locally here at the St. Mary's Food Bank Alliance, and she also helps homeowners with foreclosure awareness. Awareness. Uh, she started at the bottom as a receptionist, worked her way up to being one of the number one loan officers in the country, as we said before. And the most important part is she does this being a mother to three children. So welcome, Lizzie. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you. What an awesome intro. And guys, if you are not familiar with Gordon, Gordon is literally one of the coolest, most hardworking mm -hmm. agents in all of Phoenix. Thank you. Your clients are lucky to work with you. And I'm honored to be on this, this show. Awesome. So let's jump it right, right into it. Why everybody's here today. Uh, if you're a home buyer, listen to these three things and take them to heart and, and roll with them. So let's talk about just uh, maybe home buyer programs. I know a lot of times people, I get them Call, people call them first time home buyer programs. I know sometimes that's the case. You have to be a first time home buyer and sometimes you don't. Uh, so you're the professional. So tell us more about, you know, what people might be looking for. Yeah. Um, especially in this market where you really do have to save a lot of your funds to buy down interest rates or to pay down costs. Um, oh, first time home buyer programs are really great. Uh, typically, when people are referring to a first-time homebuyer, they mean people who haven't owned a property in the last three years. That's at technically what qualifies as a first-time homebuyer for mortgages, but they're low down payment programs, anywhere between 3 and 5% down, um, and they're like the 3% program is only available to first-time homebuyers, 5% and 3.5% are available to any homebuyer so long as they're occupying, but most people take advantage of them when they're first-time homebuyer. Uh, there are also bond programs, down payment assistance programs. Some are specific to being a first time home buyer. Some are just specific to being an occupant home buyer. But in general, that's what people are referring to are just low down payment programs that are more flexible in credit and more flexible with debt to income ratios. Awesome. Like how easy are these programs to obtain? I think just mortgages in general, a lot of people are, they're scared of, they think the process is unfortunately absolutely horrific. And I know you make it easy for everybody, um, but like these type of programs, like how easy are they to get? Yeah. So getting a mortgage is like getting a physical, right? Uh, you provide a whole bunch of information to someone and we always just like worry we have like a fatal illness. Um, 
everyone's like, I'm not going to qualify. So it's generally 30 days paycheck stubs, last two years of W-2s. We want to see a two-year work history and a credit score greater than 580. That's typically what it what it takes to qualify. Okay. Now, there's obviously more specifics in terms of debt to income ratio or, or you know, types of income, assets, et cetera. Uh, but generally speaking, we want to see the foundation is like two years work history, a debt to income ratio under 45% and down payment funds, anywhere between three and 5%. Um, I, I personally feel like it's not a complicated process. It's just one, like buying a home is the second most stressful short-term event in a person's life versus death of a family member. It just makes mm -hmm. people feel really uncomfortable. And, you know, it's like, if you aren't needing to get a home loan, a lot of times people don't pay attention, believe it or not, to like where they put their taxes or, mm -hmm. or where their last paycheck stuff went. And those are ty the types of things that cause people anxiety. It is not a complicated process though. It's just a stressful one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I know we're throwing around a lot of terms and debt to income ratio and percentages and things right. like that. So if you haven't purchased a home, a lot of that can sound very uh, scary. Uh, so if you're local here in Arizona, uh, like, so Lizzie and her team are fantastic resource. So if, to be honest, if none of that absolutely made sense, get in touch with her and she can run you through the process painlessly. If you're watching this somewhere else, reach out to a mortgage originator wherever you are and they can do the same. Cause I think that's kind of one of the biggest fears is a lot of people you know, they read a lot of things on the internet about this, that, and the other thing, and it almost scares them or gives them an overwhelming amount of information. So they don't know where to start. So they just don't start at all. Or I think even worse, a lot of times, uh, especially when you say having good credit, people will go to something, uh, an online credit reporting, uh, I don't even know the name, but anyways, a long, but they run their credit. It spits out a number. And just so you know, that's not even really the number that a mortgage lender uses. And I get people, oh, I'm trying to fix my credit and they're doing it on their own. And I've actually had it happen to clients of mine before where they do it on their own and they actually make their credit worse where someone like yourself can give them advice on exactly the changes they need to make to become a home buyer. For sure. And one of the things that I will say is that as a first time home buyer, the importance of getting pre-qualified as soon as possible is going to be the, t the number one tactic that I would recommend. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be anywhere between six months to 24 months, right? So two years. Mm -hmm. And so that way we have enough time to work on credit. We have enough time to save a down payment. You have enough time to understand how that monthly payment impacts your budget. A lot of times people think that because they're not in the market to buy in the next 30 to 45 days, they should hold off. But the sooner you know, the better you can plan. And the best planned home buyers are the ones that have the easiest, smoothest transactions. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, as far as credit repair, guys, just know that, you know, it sounds logical, the less amount of credit you have, the higher your credit score. And you would think that, right, because you would say, okay, well, I have less debt. But really, what we're looking for is your ability to repay and being able to demonstrate that you have lines of credit that you can borrow from, that you repay on a regular, consistent basis mm -hmm. is what's really going to improve that score. And so oftentimes, like you said, they'll look at a credit karma and they'll close a bunch of accounts thinking that they're reducing their debt when mm -hmm. they're in fact just closing off like their credit references. Mm -hmm. So if you think of it more like a resume versus like um, an example of how much debt you have, you would treat your credit differently. So, and that's all the stuff that we educate clients on when they're through the home buying process with us. Awesome. And you, that's fantastic because that was going to be my next question. So you got that one, hit that nail right on the head. Well, let's jump into it. I know we mentioned a little bit before, uh, but let's just talk about down payment percentage and I've been doing this for 10 years and I think like a broken record, a lot of times, every time I talk to a home buyer or someone thinking about purchasing a home, they're on, you know, their first thing is I don't have enough money for a down payment. And I think the common misconception, the magic number is you need 20% down to purchase a home. So tell us a little more about that, or maybe some information you didn't give us on the, uh, the last uh, point. 
Yeah. So a lot of times uh, financial information gets passed down from generation to generation. And it used to be that our grandparents had to put down 20% or more to purchase mm -hmm. a home. Back then, purchase prices were under 100000 So it was a lot easier to be able to do that. As home prices have increased, um, they have made a lot more options to make home, like buying a home as a um, a median income buyer or less more mm -hmm. attainable. And so like, I think back in the eighties, they created low down payment programs. So they've been around for a very, very long time. Uh, but the thing is that generational information regarding like how, what you should do with your finances just mm -hmm. carries on for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of believers, right? Typically our grandparents and our parents that have bought homes with 20% down, most people that have owned one or two homes have 20% down. So that's why they're utilizing it. There's some, you know, misconceptions or maybe some bad feelings towards mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you put 20% down or more, typically you don't have that, but there are a ton of options for using, you know, a three to 5% down program. And the reason that you would want to do that is because it starts your equity journey a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. So most people's wealth will actually be, amassed in their home equity. It's like 75% of most people's retirements. And so the sooner that you can start that, the quicker that will grow. And just know that it's not based on the amount of money that you put into the home, right? And your cash outlay, it's actually based on the entire value of the home. So if you buy a $400,000 house, that house appreciates 5% a year, you're growing $20,000 wow. a year on that initial cash investment. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I mean, like you get a hundred percent return basically in one year. So mm -hmm. I would just, that's why I recommend it. That's why those programs are available. There's a ton of them out there. And, um, you know, I hope that answered your question. Sorry. I went on a tangent. No, no, you, that's awesome. I think the more information, the better. Um, and I think a few things is what we uh, talking about down payment. And uh, so there are a few things out there. So first of all, if you're a veteran, thank you for serving our country, uh, first and foremost. But if you are a VA, I've talked to so many buyers, and we're going through the down payment thing. And I say, Hey, have you been in the military? And they say, Yes, and they actually don't even know that they can purchase a home with 0% down. So if you're a veteran served in the military or armed forces, definitely something to look into. And then depending on where you're at in uh, certain parts of the country, this is not going to necessarily be good if you live in a large metropolitan area, but maybe on the outskirts or out call in the country. Uh, USDA also has a, a home loan program, which is 0% down as well. So a lot of things that people don't know about. Uh, so let's just real quickly, what is, as far as like conventional, uh, those type of loan programs, regardless of their status, what's the lowest down payment in those programs that a buyer can buy just for informational purposes? Hopefully you're enjoying this interview with Lizzie and you're getting a ton of information. If you are a home buyer here in the Phoenix area and you need my help, text message me at 480-498-3334. So a conventional loan um, is a 3% down when you are a first time home buyer. So you haven't owned a home in three years. Otherwise it's 5%. FHA is three and a half percent. A VA loan, so long as you occupy it and have, you know, full entitlement and you're not buying in the jumbo bracket is mm -hmm. uh, is zero down. Uh, USDA, if you're a first time home buyer, is also zero uh, percent down. Okay. And so, uh, and then for those people that qualify in jumbo areas, mm -hmm. uh, there are things called high balance loans. There's high balance for, you know, government financing, VA, FHA, and then high balance for conventional. Mm -hmm. So that reduces your down payment percentage, but typically in a jumbo bracket, it's like 10 to 20%. Yeah. Awesome. And then just for those, I know you mentioned it before, mortgage insurance, regardless if you love it or hate it, normally what is the minimum down payment you have to put down if you absolutely don't want that? It's really specific on the loan type, right? Okay. So there are a lot of veterans that put down down payments. You still have a VA funding fee, which is technically mortgage insurance. Um, if you put down 20% on an FHA loan, you still have mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. So 20% um, on a conventional loan uh, prevents you from having to pay mortgage okay. insurance. Awesome. And I just want to, I know we were kind of going a little long on this topic, but something I think that just recently came out, which I think is fantastic. And I get a lot of people that uh, want to get into the kind of multifamily space. Um, so can you touch, I think recently the down payment percentage on the 
correct? Two to four units just recently came down. It did. Oh my gosh. So um, there are some, there were some low down payment conventional loans for multifamily units, mm -hmm. typically they're for duplexes um, or for, you know, a first time home buyer that made, you know, a certain income criteria. And it was always, it always prevented a first time home buyer from being able to also acquire a multifamily unit. So it used to be like 20, 25% down. Mm -hmm. They've reduced that all the way to five. Awesome. Um, and obviously there's some additional criteria to that. FHA has always allowed for you to do three and a half percent. So long as you know, the debt mm -hmm. service is covered by the overall rents of the property. And so it's a wonderful way for a first time home buyer to also be an investor. And so, um, I, I wish I had bought my first house as a duplex. Like mm -hmm. I'm that passionate yeah. about it. I agree. No, thank you. And that's awesome. I, that's why I have you here. Cause I, we didn't even talk about talking about this and I threw it out and you ran with it. So thank you uh, for that as well. So, and then lastly, let's just talk about the, the phrase closing costs. I think a lot of buyers, they hear the word closing costs. And for me, I know I have to explain it. And I know if they're, once again, reading things online or getting information that might, you know, they don't know what they are. And it might even be like a hump why they don't move forward with the process because they're getting the wrong information. And when they start thinking the 20% down and closing costs that you know, home ownership is just not even attainable. So maybe you can just kind of give us a brief synopsis of what they are, what goes into them. Just that way people have a, you know, fantastic understanding of that. Absolutely. And um, I'm going to answer the question, but one thing that I really do hope that your listeners hear is that your very first financial goal should really be to purchase a home, right? You get the added utility of living there. You're going to have to pay rent somewhere unless you're lucky enough not to have a housing payment, but truly people who feel that they can't buy, there's always strategies, roommates, house hacking, multifamily dwellings, co-signing, partnering. I mean, there's a variety of ways to purchase. Mm -hmm. The sooner you do, the greater you build wealth. Closing costs, just in general, though, you do have your down payment. Closing costs, you know, depending on the purchase price, are going to be like 2 to 3% of whatever that price is. And closing costs are mortgage costs, their title and escrow costs, their attorney costs, their transfer tax costs, HOA costs, title fee mm -hmm. costs. And a lot of times it can be overwhelming, right, for a client to see all those different types of categories. But just know that every market has its selling points. This particular market, even though interest rates are high, because interest rates are high, sellers are a lot more negotiable with what they're willing to assist you with in terms of paying down your credit or your closing costs. And so just know that, yes, if they're going to be somewhere in the thousands, like I would say anywhere between five to 15, depending on your purchase price. And that's mm -hmm. not a quote, that's a general summation. Um, but it is something that you could get assistance on in a market like today. So mm -hmm. oftentimes I see anecdotally that we'll get one to 3% being paid back. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're able to utilize that to reduce your out-of-pocket expenses by down your interest rate. I mean, there is a cost to purchasing, mm -hmm. but when you understand the overall rate of return that you can get a hundred percent on your cash investment, anywhere between three and 5%, mm -hmm. you should absolutely do it. Yeah. Awesome. So a lot of information and there's really no reason if you want to truly be a home owner. Um, and I say, I always say this, if, if you, if you pay, pay your bills and probably have some stream of income, uh, pretty good chance you can probably buy a house. And I know I did a, and I know a lot of people are relying on the news, the mainstream news for a lot of the real estate information. We actually did a, a, a video a few weeks ago about this as well. So if you're watching this and you don't think home ownership is a reality based on whatever information you are hearing, I would almost guarantee you that you could probably want, own a house if you want to. Uh, like I said, there's down payment assistance. If you don't have the money for down payment, if you qualify, especially in this market, I know here locally in Phoenix, and I'm probably pretty sure nationally, depending on markets from a lot of the agents I'm talking to from around the country, uh, a lot of sellers are giving uh, in and contributing towards closing costs for their buyers. So even getting in, you know, with really minimum amount of money down so that, you know, I guess I can't afford it. I don't have a down payment. I don't have the money. Very, very, very good chance that 
you can. So uh, I don't know anything else you want to add as far as first time home buyer programs, down payment percentages, closing costs that you might think bring some value. Yeah, I think um, one thing that people just tend to not understand, especially when they're first time home buyer, is when you have the most leverage. So I understand it's super scary to want to buy right now because you hear interest rates are historically high, you hear purchase prices are high, you hear big words like inflation, recession, you know, um, people always worry that there's going to be this housing crisis. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that every single market has its winner. And the longer you can be in the market, the bigger the payday. And so mm -hmm. a house will typically appreciate and double in value every 20 years, which is something that most people do not take into account for. And so like, if you knew that, right, how long would it take you to save that same amount of money? Most people would never be able to save the amount of money that they amass in home equity. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that most markets are not first time home buyer friendly. Like we just experienced three years where it was a frenzy with cash investors, move up buyers, uh, international investors, and first time home buyers just were priced out. So were our veteran buyers. Mm -hmm. And so even though this market is scary with high interest rates, it's typically where a first time home buyer will have the most leverage. And so they'll get their closing costs paid for, they'll get extensions if they need them the mm. sellers are more flexible with repairs mm. and purchase price negotiations and other markets are not and if you're somebody who's watching this saying you know what i'm going to wait till interest rates come down i mean that is a financial choice you will have to make for your budget but one thing to consider is that with every one percent that interest rates go up or down you lose about a million buyers wow and so if interest rates go down we're in like the mid to high sevens right now if they go into the mid to high sixes you get another million buyers. If they go down to the high fives, you get another million buyers. If they go back down to the seven. So there's anywhere between three and 5 million people on the mm -hmm. sidelines right now, waiting for that same opportunity that you are. Mm -hmm. And so just know that more competition means that you get less buying mm -hmm. leverage, which means home prices go up, means that you don't get those seller contributions, mm -hmm. means that your out of pocket expenses will go up. And so I just want you guys to really understand that as real estate is a real money investment. Awesome. I know we've unpacked a lot of information uh, in, in today's video. Uh, Lizzie, I really thank you for joining us. And if you're a local buyer, especially here in the Phoenix market, feel free to reach out to Lizzie or myself. And I know we have a lot of information on our YouTube channel. Check out Lizzie's uh, YouTube. It's phenomenal. So if you want even more information, uh, check that out. But Lizzie, it was an honor having you here today, uh, just to kind of give us the lowdown from one of your, the most awesome loan person ever. So thank you again. If you are getting a ton of value out of all the information and videos that we put out, make sure to subscribe to our channel here. So when we put out all of our videos, you get those alerts and you can get all the information you are looking for. But also I think this video right here is something you have to watch next.